Greetings, this is Charles Darwin, and I'm here to talk to you about sex. In animals, sex is necessary to produce new combinations of genes in the offspring that will enhance their chance of survival and reproduction in environments that are new and perhaps unpredictable. And so every animal has male and female, except for a few of them that have male and female in the same animal. But even those, such as earthworms and mollusks, have to mate with each other, the male parts of one lining up the female parts of another, and vice versa, so that they still come up with a mixture of genes, even if an individual animal is both male and female. I'm here to tell you about how with plants, it's a lot more complicated of a matter. Now most plants, most flowering plants anyway, have both the male parts and the female parts in the same flower. The male parts are the stamens. They produce the pollen, which is carried by the wind or by pollinators to another flower and deposited on the female part of a flower. The stigma is the surface on which the pollen lands, and the ovary is where the ovules are that get pollinated, get fertilized by the pollen. Okay, therefore, it would seem to be so easy for a flower just to pollinate itself for the pollen from the stamens to fall onto the stigma of the same flower. But in most cases, that does not work. In most cases, the pollen from a flower will not grow on the stigma of that same flower that's genetically identical. That the only way to get the pollen to grow, and therefore fertilize the ovules, is for it to be a genetically different flower, but presumably, in most cases, one of the same species. Therefore, even when you have a flower with both male and female parts in it, you have to have cross-pollination. But there are many plants where even that's not quite good enough. The flowers may have both male and female parts in them, but those parts are not active at the same time. In protandrous flowers, that is flowers where the male, andrus, is first, proto, the stamens become mature, and later the ovules become mature. So when the stamens produce pollen, then they have finished producing pollen before the stigma becomes receptive to pollen. Therefore, the stigma must receive pollen from another flower. Of course, this wouldn't work if all of the flowers in the entire population were exactly synchronized. That what works is that when the pollen is being released by one flower, then some other plant that's a little bit further along in its development has the stigmas receptive for the pollen. Similarly, there's protogenous flowers, where the female part becomes active first, proto, first, gynus, female. And so even when a flower is both male and female parts, they're not necessarily active at the same time. And then there are many plants, especially trees, that have male flowers and female flowers. So the flowers cannot pollinate themselves. However, those flowers are on the same plant. So it's theoretically possible that the pollen from a male flower may pollinate the female flower of the same tree, for instance, but that generally does not happen. Perhaps they become active at different times. For instance, in oaks, the pollen is released a little bit earlier than the ovules become receptive. And also, the way they're organized, that the on pine trees, for instance, which are not flowering plants, but they have their female cones on top and their male cones near the bottom. Therefore, it is impossible for pollen to rain down upon the female cones because the female cones are on top. And the only way for the pollen to get up there is for it to be blown up, which means it's very likely to come from a different tree. And then there are some plants that are just like animals, or at least most animals, that is, they have sexes. There are male and female trees or other plants of the same species. I've got one of them right here. This is a Kentucky coffee tree, Gymnocletus dioicus, and it's got very large leaves. Uh, I can find one right here. Very large leaves. This is a leaf. It's divided into leaflets, and each leaflet is divided into pinules. This tree is now large enough, it should be producing fruit, which in the case of this family, the legume family, would be legumes, or bean-like fruits. However, that is not going to occur because this is a male tree, and as long as it lives, it will never bear fruit, it will release pollen, and as far as I know, that pollen will be totally wasted because I'm not aware of any other Gemocletus trees in the town where I live. 
It's possible that I've missed some, but I don't know about it. Well, anyway, there are lots of different ways that organisms have of mixing their genes up for the next generation. Not just for the sake of the population, but for the sake of their individual successful reproduction and fitness. You could have flowers where the male and female parts are active at different times, or the pollen will not germinate on the stigma of the same flower, or you could have separate male and female flowers on the same plant, which we call monoecious, or you could have separate plants, dioecious, as in the case of this Kentucky coffee tree. This is Charles Darwin. Tally ho, and amen.